In today's video, I'll be showing you how to get from mining almost 700 iron in 5 minutes to getting over 60,000 iron in just 5 minutes. I'll also be going over some tips on how to find all the ores in the game and how to stop your mine from falling in on your head. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into it and find out if you're an efficient miner in 7 Days to Die Alpha 20. There's 6 major resources to mine in 7 Days to Die Alpha 20. Those are stone, iron, lead, coal, nitrate and oil shale. You can find large nodes of stone on the surface which will be marked on your map as large grey blobs. These stone nodes give a base of 55 stone for 500 health worth of mining. These smaller nodes will give you 22 stone per 400 health which is massively worse so avoid them where possible. Iron nodes can be seen on the map as this rusty colour and they'll give you a base of 100 iron and 14 stone for 600 health. When you find a node like this, you'll be notified that there is more beneath the surface. You can mine this all up for even more of the resources you're gathering. Just remember to bring some frames so you can get back out of the hole, or better yet, turn the frames into ladders using the shape menu and place them down the hole as you go. You may also want to place a hatch at the top to avoid any surprise visitors. These next resources will all give you a base of 50 of their respective resource and 14 stone per 600 health of node. These yields can be increased, which I'll cover later in the video. Lead looks like this and will appear as a blue blob on your map. Coal looks like this and will appear as a black blob on your map. It's important to note that coal does not spawn in the desert biome unless you happen to find a POI with some coal inside like this mine. Nitrate will appear as a white dot and oil shale will appear as a beige dot. Oil shale only spawns in the desert biome, but like coal you may find some in POIs. All these resources can of course be found underground as well, although still following the biome spawn rules of the desert replacing coal with oil shale. To start a dedicated multi-purpose mine, you'll first want to pick a good location. First, make sure you're not building under a structure because of the stability mechanic. I'll explain this mechanic a bit more later, but right now just know that you don't want to build directly underneath anything important. I like to keep about 100 wooden frames on me and then dig down to bedrock. There's no random caves or lava in this game, so it's safe to just mine it straight down. You want to dig down to bedrock because you'll want to avoid dirt at all costs. Dirt is weak and will cause cave-ins if you mine directly under it. Mining to bedrock leaves you plenty of room to dig without hitting any dirt at all. You'll know you're at bedrock because you won't be able to mine any further and you'll hear this annoying sound when you hit the rock. Now you'll want to build a ladder back up to the surface. I personally like to make my ladders too wide so that I have more room to move and so it fits well with the little mine entrance I like to make using wood cellar doors but that is not necessary. A one wide hatched ladder will do. Be sure to put spikes around the entrance just in case your mining attracts nearby zombies. Or even worse, if you generate enough heat to summon a screamer who, if she sees you, will scream and summon a horde. Heat is a complex mechanic that is outside the scope of this video but basically doing several certain things in 7 days to die will generate heat. Mining is one of those things that will do it, especially when mining iron or lead as these produce extra heat when hit. Additionally, starting the auger has a massive heat spike, so if you're using your auger, try and hold it down rather than stopping and starting. You'll use more gas, but you'll generate less heat and attract less screamers. Also, sneaking will make you produce less heat and noise, so it's a good idea to sneak while you mine. You'll want to dig around using one wide tunnels to preserve as much structural integrity as possible. I'd recommend digging about 20 blocks in each direction from your ladder and seeing if you hit any resources. If not, it's probably time to start branch mining. Pick a branch and start digging more one way tunnels spaced apart to reveal more of the ores around you. Ore generation is basically random, so there's no real trick to this strategy. I'd recommend though that you leave a lot of room between your branches, about 8 blocks should do. You don't need to have like a 3 wide gap because ore nodes in this game are huge, so you won't miss them even when leaving large gaps like 8 blocks. And again, that's going to stop you from straining the ceiling any more than you need to. When you do hit an ore, just mine it out, it's fairly simple. I do recommend trying to find the top of the node and mining down, this will stop you from losing any nodes from the minor collapses. Speaking of collapses, structural integrity is a deep and complicated topic and I'd like to avoid going into it fully in this video for the sake of time, but basically all blocks have infinite support vertically, so if a given block has more blocks beneath it all the way down to bedrock, there is no chance that that block will collapse. When you start to take out the blocks 
blocks underneath it though, horizontal support comes in. Horizontal support is essentially how much weight a block can hold on each of its sides. Each side of a block can support that horizontal support value. For example, wooden frames have a mass of 5 and a horizontal support of 40. This means that one wooden frame can support 8 wooden frames in any configuration on each of its sides. As you place them, the block ghosts will go from green to yellow to red. If you place a block that's red, it will fall and everything on that same horizontal support will start to fall, which can cause cascades and more and more damage. It's worth noting that the game executes these cave-ins from the top of the world down. So if you're mining away underneath a building, the roof of that building will begin to cave in first if you're not being careful, and you won't exactly notice the issue until most of the building has crumbled above you, which is why I told you not to mine under structures. Even if you do have a perfect support grid, you won't really know it's breaking the structure above until you come back up, but you still have to worry about cave-ins in general. To avoid these cave-ins, you want to place wooden frame pillars in your mine to support the ceiling. Placing cheap wooden blocks down from the floor to the ceiling will provide infinite vertical support to all the blocks above it, allowing these blocks to start providing horizontal support to the surrounding blocks. One wooden pillar really adds a huge amount of support to your mine. There's no reason whatsoever to use any block that is more expensive than wooden frames because the vertical support will be exactly the same. All you need to do is connect the blocks above it back to bedrock. There's no one-size-fits-all magical grid size to use these pillars in, a lot of people swear by spacing them out by 4 blocks, but this is mostly overkill for your general mining operations. You only really need to support your mine if you're carving out large caverns. The larger the surface area of your ceiling, the more supports you'll need, because the bigger the hole you make, the more weight you're putting on the edge blocks. The more weight you put on these edge blocks, the more likely a collapse is. So using supports here is a very good idea. Alternatively, if you don't want to use wood, you can simply leave stone in place as a pillar. And if you don't want to deal with this mechanic at all, you could simply dig pits rather than mines. Dig from the surface down and you will not have a ceiling to cave in. Just remember to put a fence around it. Or you can dig down from the top of a mountain. So now you know where ores spawn and how to mine them without dying, how do you maximise your yields? Let's start with Miner 69er. Miner 69er is a 5 rank perk requiring 7 strength, which gives you 150% extra block damage with axes, shovels, and power tools. This perk also allows you to craft higher level tools. This perk doesn't give you any more resources directly, but it does let you harvest ores much faster at a loss of no resources. However, Mother Load, which is also a 5 rank perk requiring 7 strength to max, will give you 100% more resources from each node. So these two perks together will massively increase the speed at which you gather resources. Sexual Tyrannosaurus, a 4 rank strength perk maxing out at 7 strength, will reduce tool stamina usage by 25%, meaning you'll be able to mine for longer before you find that power tool. Also making you use less food and water while mining as stamina is regenerated by spending food and water points. Next up, we have a temporary bonus, Rockbusters. Rockbusters can be used to increase your harvest yield by 20%, and this works exactly like Motherload, but to a lesser extent, and only temporarily. But it does work with Motherload as well. Rockbusters can be purchased from vending machines for 100 dukes, and they'll last 10 minutes. The Iron Gut perk in the Fortitude Tree can be used to extend this to 15 minutes if you like. Next we have the main mining skill book, The Art of Mining. Rank 1 gives you a 1% chance to get a silver nugget, a 0.7% chance to get a gold nugget, and a 0.5% chance to get a diamond upon harvesting iron, lead, coal, nitrate, or oil shale. Rank 2 gives you the ability to craft diamond tip blade mods for tools, which will give them 40% more durability. Rank 3 lets you harvest 10% more ore while under the effects of coffee when using a stone axe or pickaxe, but not the auger. No, this doesn't make the pickaxe better than the auger. I'll explain why later. Rank 4 lets you craft blackstrap coffee, which is just coffee but better. Rank 5 lets you craft resources into compact stacks. This can be used to get a lot of free XP, and I have a video on that that I'll link at the end. Rank 6 makes you take 50% less damage from blocks falling in on you, which you shouldn't have to deal with if you're doing this properly. And rank 7 allows you to craft lanterns and mining helmets, which can be helpful seeing in dark mines if you play on low brightnesses. The completion bonus gives you a 20% chance to one-shot any or block, and this is why the auger is better than the pickaxes, even though picks do get that slight coffee bonus. The 20% chance to one shot applies to each time the auger spins, and the auger attacks about 6 times faster than the steel pickaxe, so that one shot chance really adds up when comparing the differences between them, which I'll show you later. Also rank 6 of Fireman's Almanac will allow you to do 10% more damage to coal and burn trees. Now let's cover the final thing you can do to maximise your efficiency, tool mods. 
The Iron Breaker increases damage against Iron and Lead by 15%. The Bunker Buster increases your damage against Stone by 15%. The Grave Digger increases damage against Dirt by 15%. The Diamond Tip Blade mod increases your durability by 40%. And the Small and Large Motor Tool Tank mods increase fuel capacity by 50% and 100% respectively. Let's just get this one out of the way quickly. You should probably put the Iron Breaker, the Bunker Buster and the Grave Digger on your Augur as they all increase the damage against the things that you'll want to use it on. And they'll increase the base damage of your auger by 10% each. Then combine it with either a diamond tip or a fuel tank mod, again for an extra 10% damage plus the bonuses those mods give. Which leads me into the last question you might have, which may have actually been your first question. Should I be using the steel pickaxe or the auger? The short answer is the auger, thanks for watching. But to demonstrate these differences, I did some tests. The stone axe at level 1 with absolutely no modifiers mines about 600 stone in 5 minutes. The steel pickaxe at level 6 with four mods, all the perks plus rock busters and even the coffee bonus will give you about 10,000 stone in five minutes. The auger at level six with four mods, all the perks along with rock busters but with no coffee because it does nothing for the auger will give you roughly 25,000 stone. Keep in mind that there isn't even a 20% chance to one hit the stone because that only works on ores so this accounts basically for the base yields with absolutely no luck involved. Now let's look at iron which will have that 20% chance to one hit with the art of mining maxed out. At level 1, the stone axe got about 700 iron and 90 stone with no other modifiers in 5 minutes. The level 6 steel pickaxe with 4 mods, all the perks, coffee and rock busters gather 25,000 iron and about 3,000 stone. And the level 6 auger with 4 mods, all the perks and rock busters gave me 60,000 iron and 10,000 stone. Which by the way means that if you could continuously mine iron for 1 hour without taking any breaks you would get 1.2 million iron per hour. All the other ores give you half as much as iron, so just half the number for all of those. And with that, you should know more than you ever wanted to about mining. If you learned anything new, consider hitting that like button. If you want to see that video about getting free XP from the Art of Mining Volume 5, you can check it out here on the right. Thank you to my channel members for making these videos possible, and thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.